Okay, move out. AH-56A Cheyenne, the Army's newest helicopter. A combat in cities course in West Berlin. And the ready fighting men of a reserve brigade. All in this issue of your Army Report. California, the Cheyenne helicopter made its first public flight. And you notice, he'll come to a stop using the reverse thrust. Sector is slowing down entirely using the reverse thrust from the thrusting propeller. He's not using brakes. He now will show you some flexibility by reversing again, putting the thrusting propeller in the rear in, in the reverse position. Don will perform tight turns on the ground now, turning to the left and to the right. with agility such as no vertical rising aircraft has ever flown before. I think it's interesting to note the stability that is being demonstrated here in this wind. going to do a turn about a spot, which again demonstrates the high stability and personal handling qualities of the Cheyenne. This stability is a requirement for the aircraft to put its tremendous firepower on the target. John's now taking up vertically to about 30 feet and will turn to the northeast as he descends and hovers. Gear retraction on the Cheyenne adds many miles an hour to its top speed and also many miles to its range. The Cheyenne has the capability by using the thrusting propeller as is, he is doing now. He's applying uh, reverse thrust to the propeller and you notice the nose low attitude that the vehicle attains. This gives it an increase in the aiming angle for the fixed guns and rockets. He can get to 17 degrees nose low and approximately 20 degrees nose up using this technique. This is going to be a medium speed run, about 100 miles an hour, using the pressure propeller and watch her go up. Cheyenne will climb fully loaded right up to its service ceiling of 26,000 feet. This will be a relatively low speed pass, about 110 miles an hour. Coming back. 
impact uh, fairly close to the surface at approximately 200 miles an hour. officials on hand at the Cheyenne's first public flight stated that they were impressed and pleased with the new helicopter's performance, adding that the Cheyenne will make a valuable addition to the Army's fire support capability. They also stated that the Cheyenne helicopter is scheduled to enter the Army's inventory as an all-weather, day or night fire support system in the near future. of a barbed wire boundary line separating East from West Berlin, East German soldiers man sentry posts which keep close watch on American forces training in the Western sector. A combat in cities training course is conducted nearby throughout the year for United States troops assigned to West Berlin. East German soldiers observe the training exercises. Although the ammunition used is harmless, the training is otherwise carried out in the most realistic combat manner during these simulated attacks. The mission of the troops in the mock battles, as in the real thing, is to close with and kill or capture the enemy, who are played by other U.S. soldiers acting as aggressors. isolate the area from its surroundings by seizing key positions. They advance systematically, overtaking enemy fortifications. Vantage points overlooking fields of fire are important objectives. Landmines and flamethrowers are employed during the exercise for added realistic effects. Limited mobility and restricted communications within built-up areas places increased responsibility on the initiative of a small unit leader whose judgment must be relied upon. Grappling hooks with ropes and scaling ladders are methods used to enter higher floors of a building.
as rooms are cleared. Pieces of white cloth are thrown over the windowsill as a signal for shockwave troops to advance. personnel carriers in their infantry support roles flank the enemy barracks area to the rear, and troops move out to conduct a house-to-house -house search, flushing the aggressor forces hiding within these buildings. At the same time, they quickly secure the high vantage points overlooking sniper positions. sentries continue their observation. After securing one building, the troops move on to the next, under protective fire cover during their house-to-house -house search of the mock city. When the aggressor forces have been defeated and the objective seized, the exercise comes to a successful conclusion with its many valuable lessons learned. Within view of East German sentry posts, continuous realistic training of the U.S. soldier in the combat in cities course in West Berlin ensures that our forces will remain on the alert, combat ready to meet and defeat any act of aggression any time and at any place. The 205th Brigade arrives at Camp McCoy from 28 cities in Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin. Its units range from the oldest in the United States Army to the newest. The Old Guard is here, and the 14th Artillery, the 17th Infantry, the 409th, and the 410th. The 33rd Armor and the 4th Cav are represented. There are engineers to build bridges, searchlight companies to light them, smoke companies to conceal them. There are military police, military intelligence, and military public information units. An aviation company to fly the choppers and the gunships. A support battalion to link them all together. The brigade brings with it the battle-hardened veteran, the decorated officer, the army-wise sergeant, and the raw recruit. The immediate mission will be to weld these units and these men into a cohesive, mobile, self-supported striking force. To one man, the mission is paramount, for he must prove his unit's work. Barber, Arnold T., Brigadier General, Commanding. The mission of this brigade is to move from our assembly area at this point and move into a mobile defense with preparation of launching attack. For the intelligence, we have this information at this time. We have two mechanized battalions to our front. They're located generally in these two areas. We have two tank battalions that have been reported moving down this highway here. Lights burn through the night. Orders are on the way. The mission, Jack Pine, 
one. In the war room at Corps headquarters, each unit of the brigade becomes a box or circle or flag or pin on the huge situation map. Radios crackle urgent commands, nerves tingle, the pulse pounds, the brigade breathes. The garage will go to the field. It will turn twisted metal into functional parts. In the motor pool, routine maintenance is now top priority. Emergency aid packs, plasma, bandages, information tags, and medications are moving down a hasty production line in the medical company. The materiel, the men, the machines are moving on the mission. Field racks, generators, communications wires, and crated ammunition, reaching a rendezvous at dawn. Second platoon, Charlie Company. Fourth battalion, 33rd Armor. Commanded by Lieutenant Dale John Wirth, a 26-year-old officer trained at Fort Knox and rising through the ranks to a commission. Like many armor officers or tank commanders, Wirth teaches tactics which take advantage of the tank's mobility, firepower, and brawn. A tank has actual and psychological powers. Worth will use all of them in his mission. The artillery, speed, and power. One, one, zero. Bravo sight, plus four. Bravo sight, plus four. Deflection, two, seven, three, two, quadrant, two, eight, seven. Center, one round, battery, one round in effect. Artillery units are trained to react instantly. Crews receive a mission, pull off the road, train the howitzers on a target perhaps seven miles away. Umpires and evaluators mark score sheets, adding to the pressure. Three rounds will be fired for record. Air attacks have finished. The shelling has died away. The infantry 
will take the high ground. The infantry waits, wet, worn, weary, in the mist of dawn. The infantry feels its belly churn in the moments before attack. The infantry moves on foot in the driving rain or in the treacherous quiet of the sun-dappled wood. He is called a dog face. He carries his home upon his back, marches through three pair of boots, lives off the land, sleeps where he can, eats from a brown box labeled meal combat. He is fair target from the concealed bunker, the long range gun, the mortar, and from the sky behind the hill. separate infantry brigade has infinite capability. It can launch an armor spearhead, command artillery, feed and clothe itself, establish its own communications, and through its powerful generators, light an entire city. Combat engineers build bridges of every description. Their bridges carry tanks, trucks, equipment, supplies, and men. The infantry is on the move. firepower is not enough. It must be mobile. The 106 millimeter recoilless rifle meets such requirements. It is jeep mounted. It packs an armor piercing punch from 8,500 yards. The weapon is a massive 4.2 inch mortar, mounted on the carrier or fired from the ground. It will hurl its shell 6,000 yards with pinpoint accuracy. Number two, deflection, 079er5. In its role as a self-supporting force, the brigade must care for itself on the attack, on the defense, and in grim moments of tragedy. It replies with intensively trained professionals in its medical company. It responds to the urgent call with ambulance and helicopter. Time is precious. The skilled corpsmen will waste none of it. Their techniques are far advanced from those used in World War II and in Korea and to the rear, the surgeons are ready. They will complete the business of saving lives.
Beefy and burly, he commands a recon platoon. Schiebler, William J., 1st Lieutenant, 3rd Infantry, 26, Ranger, Paratrooper. His specialty is an old one, forged behind rock walls and hedgerows, sharpened in countless gullies and along a thousand dusty roads, home in the jungle of Vietnam. Bill Schiebler's specialty is the quick kill. Ambush. Citizen soldiers are going home, and with them ratings which range from excellent to superior. The combat veterans, the decorated officers, the army-wise sergeants, and the raw recruits are moving with a purpose. freedom's flag as they have since Concord Bridge. They carry on the rich and hard-won traditions of Breed's Hill and Red Beach One, of Cowpen and Bellow Wood, of Utah and Hill 609, of the Han and of the Rhine. In the weeks and months that follow, they will continue to pray. For if they are called again, they must be ready. These men of the brigade. 